Well, hello guys. I hope you're doing well. So today we'll be talking about guide for SRE and I wanted to create a resource which would be go to platform for everybody. So this guide will be for college students as well as professionals. So let's talk about college students first and what is expected of a student. So let's talk about resources for coding and programming skills. So since we were talking about in the last, last video that we need to learn about data structures and algorithms. So how you can, you know, hone that skill. So the resources for learning for me, it was Geeks for Geeks and I learned a lot from Geeks for Geeks. You can learn from the articles people have written from there. And also the best part, I think, the, I think most of the students who learn uh, this skill, they, they learn it by doing. So they start practicing on either lead code or if they are interested in sports programming, they start doing competitive programming, right? So these are two way you can practice for the coding or programming skill. But apart from that, uh, for SREs, you need to understand that you are required to write scripts which automates mundane stuff. So let's say there's a great tool called Grab in Linux, which basically uh, you provide a text or a file to it and you want to fetch some what has occurred in that particular file or some test. Let's say I want, I, let's say I ask you to write this code for me, which, which, in which I will provide a file and I'll provide a word and you have to fetch all the occurrences or the frequency of that particular word right or maybe like there's a huge log file and i want you to uh, fetch all the distinct ip addresses so these are like basic uh, 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 basic scripts that students can learn for si preparation now the best part now so let's talk about operating system so there's this book by andrew astenbaum is a professor and he wrote this book called Modern Operating System and also for those students he also created this Minix minimal upper, minimal Unix environment you can say for the students so that they can learn from it so it kind of mimicked Unix but it was a minimal so it was called I think maybe it was called because of that Minix so Linus Torvalds bought this book and he started learning about it and Eventually, he created Linux kernel. So you can you can see that how good this book could be, right? So I really like this book. You can learn about processes. You can learn about interrupts. You can learn about schedulers, process schedulers. You can learn about uh, disk operations. A lot of things. You can learn about memories as well, right? Right. So it's a really really good book. There's another channel called Live Overflow on YouTube, which I really like because. Uh, He's, right now he's creating videos on high level of uh, topics but in, the, in his older videos you can look for this like how to install Linux, how to program in C, how to program in Python, how CPU works and even he talked about how compiler works, what are machine languages, what are assemb assemblers, what are assembly language. So he has put down all his learnings in small videos which is really really good if you want to learn about operating system and how particular, how memory, how memory works, how you, how if you write a program, how does it loads into memory, and then you know, you get the output. So all this information you can get from here is really good. So what about practicing and how you can learn by doing an operating system? So I would ask you to design a shell from scratch. Now you must ask from the end of the screen. You must be confused. Few students must be confused that what is shell. Well, it's a, you know, as terminal in Linux, maybe if you have watched some hacking movies, you must have seen this green terminals. You don't have to create the whole shell, but uh, I would ask you to create a minimal shell. It could include four calls for like forking as like child and parent processes. So if you learn about operating system, you will learn about this as well. So you can call, you can use four calls, you can use system calls, they are called system calls, and you can use pipes, for communication between processes and like a lot of things. So this is a, I mean, one way to learn a lot of things in operating system when you design a shell. 
So this is a good to go for uh, students. So basically we also, when we were in college, we designed Shell from scratch and we learned a lot of things from, from it. So another book by the same author, Andrew Rastanabo, and he has specifically written about TCP IP model, OSI layer. From there you can learn about, uh, we will discuss about this layer as well. And you can still follow live overflow uh, channel for networking knowledge as well because he, he is a guy who used to do CDFs, he is mostly involved in uh, computer security research field. So he talks about networking, he talks about operating system, he talks about a lot of things, a lot of vulnerabilities. What about practicing? So I would ask you to design a client server system. It could be chat server, that is, it could be a chat server. So let's start with chat server, that there would be a client, there will be a server, and he, they are talking to each other. You are sending a message, you are receiving a message, and then you are sending a response back. Let's say I will ask you to create a more complicated chat server. Let's say implement the database uh, support. I mean, if the server is down, if the, if, if the server and clients, are, clients get closed and they start again, still you will get the messages back. If you want to fetch the messages, the older messages, you can get the messages from the database. So put the support for that. And I, I would ask you to create all this from scratch. It could be in C language, in C++ language, in Python language, in Java, any language, but do it from scratch. You need to learn about sockets. You need to learn about, learn about what are TCP connections, right? Why we are not using UDP connections when we are when we are um, relaying messages on sockets. So you learn a lot of stuff when you when you are debugging it, when you are create, trying to create the system. Then talking is mainly about uh, layers. So TCP IP is predominant over OSI layer right now, and so we we can talk about OSI layers and on each different level you can talk about how does it work and what's the importance of each layer in both of the scenario, like in TCP IP or in, in OSI layer. I would ask you to answer this question as well when you are in your free time, like what happens when you type www.google.com on your Google browser, Google Chrome browser, what is it happening in the background, what's the magic when you just type it and you get all the information back on your laptop. So let's move to system design now. So what are the resources for learning? I would ask you to go for exactly.io, it's not sponsored but yeah they are really good uh, yeah then GKCS and Code College are like really good YouTube channels and you can follow them for all the system designing courses and they are talking about each component be it uh, load balancing be it caching be it data sharding how to design a Twitter how to design WhatsApp status how to design uh, Facebook feed and a lot of lot of videos are over there so you can look for this guy and you you will see all this stuff over there even the code curly and he he will be talking about ul system designing he will be talking about airbnb designing zoom system designing it's really good it's really good stuff so what are the important points that you need to learn in system designing so at least you should know what are load balancers what does load balancing mean? What is caching? What does data sharding and packing up means? So when the data grows really, really big, you have to shard it. And what's the algorithm behind it? And how you should shard it? What is scaling up and scaling down on architecture, the infrastructure? And why we do it? When we scale up, that means uh, load is increasing. When you scale down, that means we, the load is decreasing. So why we are doing it and how we are doing it? How is this, how your system is fault tolerance and what does fault tolerant system means? So these are topics you can learn by searching on the internet, by learning from all these great guys. Now, the fundamentals are over. What now? So I would ask you to go for School of SRE by LinkedIn. This post, this platform is meant for college students. So they will be learning about the same stuff again, about Linux Advance, Intermediate, you can see the points, Linux Intermediate, Linux Advance, Networking, System Designing, Python. But Python and Golang are very frequently used in SRE profile because you need to write a lot of scripts 
government mundane jobs so you talk about security as well you talk about metrics and monitoring why do we need why do we require monitoring why we do require to collect metrics which will give an insight about the system the current status of the system so all of these are written down in here and they are compiled by few, few of my seniors from my ex company and now they are working with linkedin and it's really really good repository you should utilize this after that i would ask you to go to google sre book so sre was coined by google only and they created this profile and they have compiled a lot of information about their experience about their mistakes about their learnings in one place isn't that great so many people were talking about like why software engineering how sres and sds are different so here you can see the chapter 18 where they talk about software engineering in sre so when you go to this point they say in many ways the vast scale of google production has necessitated internal software development because few third party tools are designed at sufficient scale for google's needs right so there are like few tools which are not available in the market for this kind of scale so there's need to be a team who are skilled enough to develop that tool and for that you need software engineering skill so this place is also really good to understand who exactly SRS are so this is over for all the college students now we'll talk about the professionals so what is expected of an experienced SRE? So definitely the fundamentals we talked before for all the college students, the experienced SREs are expected to know all of them. Plus, there are a few resources that I want to share for the experienced SRE who are working in the, who are working in the industry or who are about to start working in the industry. So if the, your fundamentals are weak and you want to, you know, them start with a good school of SRE by living again and then you should start looking for Google of SRE work in depth because when we talked about uh, when we talked previously we were talking for the students and they don't need to go in depth like what each term means like basically you don't have to go through all of the book you just have to get an overview from it but for personals I would ask you to start reading this book in depth and learn all all the all about it go through each part of the book go through each chapter and learn from it. Now, there's another book called System Performance by Brandon Gregg and he's an engineer at Netflix. So this guy has created a, an encyclopedia for all the system performance, I would say. So he has faced some problems in, in Netflix and he has solved the problem and then he compiled all his experience all his learnings in this book for that he had created a lot of tools around it and he still uses it and he has open source it so you can learn from that as well so it's kind of a compilation case studies at netflix and from there you can learn as well so you can use the tools which he has open sourced this book is uh, available on amazon and is also available to download it from his blog site I found this interesting GitHub repository as well, where they talk about a lot of things about site reliability engineering, be it culture, be it education, like a lot of books. There are like many case studies, what are monitoring and alerting, what do you do on on-call, how do you face it, how do you, what do you do on on-call, the postmoderns, like if there is a an issue happen, and how did you, you know, go through it, go in deep and solve that issue. So this is a really great resource, I would say. And now, I would ask you to go on the internet and read case studies on the internet about outages that happened but happened at many giant companies. So now let's let's talk about an interesting announcement. I will be adding some interesting piece of information at the end of every video from now onwards which I learned in previous week or this week or when I'm shooting the video. I learned about general knowledge proof. Professor Amin Sahai explains this proof to different level of human beings from child to 
expert. This proof talks about a way by which the prover can verify his, his statement to the verifier without revealing any additional information apart from the fact that his statement is true, his or, her statement, his, his or her statement is true. So there were key points that I found from this video. He talks about passwords, elections, and blockchain. On the internet, we need to put passwords to, to verify ourselves. So what if, if this proof enabled us to let the computer verify ourselves without providing passwords? It's really great, right? And then he talks about elections. So what if there is a system where we don't need to go to election booth and put some buttons on the EVM machines to vote our candidate? Something like a system like we just elect based on this journalist proof and we don't need to we don't need to verify that it was us who voted for the candidate. Then he talks about blockchain. So in blockchain, I, I would say that the most expensive job is mining. That is verifying that particular transaction has happened. So if we could ap apply this proof in blockchain technology somehow, we can cut the most expensive operation in blockchain. So this is what I learned this week. Now, thank you guys for watching the video. Like into the channel. And you can see a link on the, ch on the screen, link tree slash in the Rahul so and you can find all the relevant links there if you want to join the discord server, discord server the link will be in the link tree i so that you can go from there thank you guys well see you in the next video bye bye